Thank you for stopping by the GAC Weekly today. I'm glad you're here, and I am glad that my guest is here as well. It's Coach Jimmy Elgis from Henderson State. We are stopping by each of the 12 member schools of the Great American Conference to get this 2020-2021 athletic season underway. It can't start quickly enough as far as I'm concerned, but it's nice to get to visit with folks from all around the Great American Conference. And Coach, you know, the last time we saw you, at least from the standpoint of getting to visit about sports, you were cutting down nets in Bartlesville, coming off a tournament championship for the men's basketball team, first tournament championship in 17 years for Henderson State. Uh, I know I said it then, I'll say it again now, three months later, congratulations. Yeah, thanks a lot, Joey. We, uh, um, Seems like eons and eons ago that we actually uh, won won that tournament, and um, <clears throat> it was really really rewarding for our guys. I think the biggest thing that, if I reflect back on it real briefly, is just the satisfaction of our players. And you know, when you set goals like we do, and when you challenge your team like we do, and for them to actually reap the reward and to tell them if you'll block out during practice, if you'll, you know, have a championship attitude during this drill, if you just lock in a little bit longer on this film, if you did that through the entire year and for it to culminate in a championship um, was really rewarding. And just seeing our players celebrate that together with some of the things that they've been through as a group um, to see our assistant coaches, that put in a lot of hours, like like a lot of coaches do throughout the country, but to actually have it pay off um, was was really special because it's been a process as you as you and I have talked for you know going on five years now. Um, it's it's a process, and for for us to to break through and to um, experience that was was really really special. Something that we'll remember for a long time. But it's such a fine line in it, Joey, with. Um, Remembering that, and and I got a little goosebumps talking about it, but but also putting that in the rearview mirror and focusing on the season at head, and and understanding that you're going to get everybody's you know best shot because of what we accomplished last year. Um, you know the intensity and the upcoming season has got to be at a whole at an entirely new level. But what what has been proud is it's been a steady climb. Um, and I think our players have done a, a remarkable job, and the credit goes to those guys. They've established a, a championship culture here of what we expect and what we do on a day-to-day basis, and now we've got to keep pushing pushing our program forward. You know, it really was a great tournament, and I, I do recall from the post-game press conferences and getting to visit with you all after each game and going into the next uh, contest, uh, there was a confidence that was there am- among your young men, and they came in and, and they were prepared each night, and they really gave uh, quite an effort, uh, an overtime victory, a two-point victory, and then an 11-point win in the championship game itself. But you know, you got that early lead, and you just kept Oklahoma Baptist at bay pretty much uh, from there on out. But I uh, guess some really good play, I think, from your big men in particular. You know, you, you talk about putting that in the rearview mirror, and I know there are a lot of folks that uh, – uh, I'm sure they're in Arkadelphia. They'd like to keep it in the windshield for a little while longer because, hey, it was a, it was a good win, but I know you have to you move on. Let's move on just at least a little bit. Recently, you were honored uh, as one of the uh, up-and-coming 15 coaches, NAIA and NCAA Division II coaches that are strong, have your program moving in the right direction, been there for five years or less. Talk about that honor. That's a, a big deal not only for you but for the university. Yeah, it's good for it's good for everybody because um, I've said this a couple times during the the you know virus and during the time when things have been shut down over this past summer, people got on podcasts, people started to you know learn more, had a little bit more time at home, and I heard this quote. It's not mine that that you know players win games, no doubt about it. Coach's job is to prepare them, but players win games and administrations you know, they win championships. And I can't, I can't tell you that enough with um, our administration here at Henderson. You know, those guys in the athletic administration have paved the way for us to do our job as coaches and, and for us to um, have really, really good players and really, really good administration where, you know, our staff is the beneficiary of that. So um, again, you know, when you win because of your guys and because of the former players and because of your administration, you receive some accolades like that. So from from a personal standpoint, you know, I'm I'm happy and 
thankful, very, very thankful, but um, also understand that there's a lot more to it than, than I'm the same guy that, you know, we won nine or 10 games my first year here, you know, coaching the same way. We just happened to establish our culture, um, continue to get good players that have been in our program for multiple years and to continue to have the belief and the um, the work ethic of the athletic administration to really push this program forward. So it's really, really good for the school. It's good for the university. It's good for everybody around here because I think everyone knows it's not any one person. It's just the entire program that, that continues to move forward with everybody's help. But I appreciate you bringing that up. Well, it's it's uh, definitely uh, you're you're worthy of the the accolades as you talked about, and I appreciate seeing your program go as well. And having visited with you as you mentioned now for about five years, I, I've appreciated the opportunities, and I always learn something when I get a chance to to talk with you. So I'm grateful as well. We're speaking now with Jimmy Elgis from Henderson State, the men's basketball coach, and uh, really quickly then, Coach, uh, as uh, as we are here on the GAC Weekly. The conference is, is heading into its 10th season. I think that I've kind of given it a bit of a jump start. So year number 10 is going to last about 14 months as, as far as uh, the GAC Weekly is concerned because we, we're moving on ahead. But you, you look at a league now, and you've been in it for you know, pretty much half of its existence as the head coach there at Henderson State, a league that is growing uh, in, in, in all facets, I believe, and, and growing not only with, with the good competition – and the, the rising tide is, is causing all the ships to rise. But I think also uh, on a national level that the GAC is getting the recognition that it's been deserving for a while as well. Yeah, no doubt. You can go back to just, um, you know, looking just across the spectrum. Look what's a, look what happened in women's basketball with, with Southwest Oklahoma, you know, a couple of years back. Look what's happened with football and Harding and, and Wachita and, and Henderson. You know, we've, we've, we've had great teams here. And, you look at men's basketball, according to some different, according to a power ranking last year, we had the second best team by number um, out of the 24, 25 Division II conferences. And that's not just, um, you know, falsehoods or, or that, that's, those are numbers. We, we were the second best league in the country, and it showed by having four teams get selected to the NCAA tournament. And I think that speaks to, you know, what Will's done to promote and, and what you've done, Joey, and, and what, what people have done to help promote this league in its, in its infancy. But you look at even, um, you know, Coach Downey was in the MIAA and he's come back to Arkansas Tech. And Coach Crutchfield, who's been at OU and been at, um, at Arkansas, and now he's over at East Central. You know, this league attracts wonderful coaches on the men, men's basketball side. Everyone's well-schooled. Um, you got really, really good players. The numbers show that. Um, the success in the in the postseason of having multiple, you know, four teams go to the NCAA tournament proves that as well. Right. And then, like you alluded to, just the the successes on a national scene, because it, it's it's hard it's hard to get to the tournament. It's hard to win games in the tournament. It's hard to advance in even one, you know, women's basketball NCAA game. And we've done that. The, the GAC has done that over the course of the last ten years. And the successes of that. You know, probably like, like what I alluded to earlier with the Henderson administration, just um, everybody pushing pushing this league forward. Um, it's it's tremendous, and and everyone's everyone's league is tough, but you know, on the men's basketball side, speaking f with what I know the best, top to bottom, you've got you know twelve great coaches, twelve outstanding teams play together every single night. It's just a challenge, and um, you're right, the the, the national recognition as this league continues to move forward is well-deserved and puts us on par with, with a lot of people, you know, throughout America. Having those four teams in the NCAA tournament in the regional last year, I think that was really quite a statement. I mean, half of the, the central region bracket made up of teams from the great American conference and definitely worthy of that recognition. Uh, coach, one last question then, and, and leading into that, you know, those numbers, that you were referring to talk about also some of the, the, the non-conference play with which the teams in the GAC have, and we're coming into now a season without non-conference play in, in a number of, of the, the sports across the board in division two, it's going to be a challenge. I think for some of the folks who rank things regionally to really get an, an, an accurate view of the better teams in the, in the, or in the region, in any region, you know, not just the central region, which I think is, is, 
the toughest region in the country. Right. But still, I, I mean, it's it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But talk about going into it from a coaching perspective, man. You you get twenty two games, but it's all GAC folks. I know it's, um, yeah, a lot of lot of stuff there, Joey. I, you know, I think what you got to do as a coach is you just got to control what you can control. Whenever you take the floor, take the field, you you understand that that game is 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 mammoth, and and I think you you don't necessarily think about that the game day, but the practices going into that. Um, you look at the football football guys. I think they play all uh, each other are all like opponents. There's no non conference in, in GAC football, and so from the first game in August you've got to be ready and raring to go. And now we have to we have to do the same thing. So what we've chosen to do is just lock in on our guys, um, even going back to this summer on trying to create a camaraderie and a togetherness and an identity as quick as you can and really build your team up because you can't, you know, the, the experimentation, the learning your team, you've got to do that. But you've also got to put yourself in position to win games right out of the shoot. And, um, it's going to be a challenge, I think, for people with the NCAA tournament, um, you know, the, the, the rack boards. And I think they're going to have to watch more film than, than ever before. Wow. I think they're going to have to have better communication with coaches throughout the league. I think coaches can tell. I think at the end of the day, people in our league know how great, you know, Adam Bohach is as a coach and how great those teams have been over the last three years. People knew that Kelly Grain's team was off the charts. You know, people knew that – Look at Oklahoma Baptist and what Coach Eaker's done and winning, I don't know how many games in a row, and the season last year, eight or nine games in a row. Uh, and then our team, you know, a good defending team that, that tried to play hard. I think people saw that, people knew that, and I think the selection committees and 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 they're going to just have to do a really good job with coaches within the league, with the commissioners, with just everybody to put their best uh, teams in that, in that field. But – Again, those are things that you know I can't control, and we're not going to have our players worry a whole lot about. We just got to focus on getting better quickly and be trying to play a really good brand of together basketball um, early. You know, November the thirteenth or fourteenth, whenever we open up, man, we've got to we've got to be, and we're not going to be, but we've got to be pushing <laughs> to to really be firing on all cylinders because like you said, I mean, every game, it's a conference game and those are huge because there's going to be a big difference between a team that finishes, you know, with 12 wins, 13 wins, 11 wins or whatever the the, the top teams are going to win. Those, there's going to be a slim margin of error. So you've got it. Your challenge is going to have your team ready every night to play. Well, coach, good luck with that because it is just that it's, it's definitely going to be a challenge and, this year as a whole, I think is going to be one to remember, not just in the GAC, but throughout division two, but specifically in the GAC year 10 should be a fun one. And, and with coaches like you up and coming 15, and, uh, I think you, you're already there. You're not just up and coming, man. You've got no. the, you've got the folks there and we'll see where it goes from here, but we appreciate you stopping by and taking time to visit with us today on the GAC weekly. Yeah, Joe, I appreciate your kind words as always. Thanks a lot for having me and, and, uh, go ready. Thanks. Thanks brother. Coach Jimmy Elgus from Henderson State. I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching. Please be sure and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It is Midwest Sportsnet, and it is the home of the GAC Weekly. In the meantime, we'll talk again later. God bless you, and have a great day.